said to have a rose scent, but I really didn't taste it. It 和普通是加口感一样甜 Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? I got some exciting news. We have a second part of Monster Hunter Wild news, where I'm gonna correct some of this stuff that I said in last episode, because some of it was wrong, specifically about levels and the paintball.、Uh, I think those two I got a little bit wrong, and I wanted to clarify. Aside from that, there's a few other things that I wanted to talk about that I saw since recording last episode. Because obviously there's a lot of news coming out of Gamescom right now.、But、before we get into that, we need to talk about Monster Hunter Rise. You know, deal with our current problems. I did hop on and I did do both the Tobi Kadachi and Mizutune and Rathalos and Tigrex quests. Why? Because I felt like it.、Um, in all honesty, these quests are just kind of boring. We've all seen these monsters, so do I really want to spend an extra episode here and then go into our blitz? Nah, I want to start the blitz right now. So,、uh, in addition to that, all these other ones are red. This one's blue. So I'm assuming maybe in Sunbreak we get a quest here, or maybe something happens、uh, with the do, 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 rampage quests. Like maybe completing a bunch of these does something. If you know why. We should do them. Please comment it. If it's just for a resource, I'll knock them off during the weekend or something. Because from what I remember, they're just kind of a little bit boring. This does mean we get to bathe in luscious frame rates and now begin the hub. Ah, yes, the hub. Fun fact: I think this is the guy who draws the images of all the monsters in this game. He's just up here. I'm almost certain it's him.、Uh, that's something I guess he just brought up there in his little text bubble. This game is sort of like how the older games were, where if you do hub quests solo, they are more difficult.、Uh, I'm actually fine with that. Honestly, I am because I want monsters to be a little bit more difficult, especially in this game where you really have the odds stacked in your favor a lot. I've already eaten Dango. All right, let's get moving. I mean, we have. Was that just like meme text? In the transition, did I just see meme text? That's awesome. They were mocking someone. That's great. I love that. I love the fact that the game's bullying me now. Holy, that's beautiful. That's that's gorgeous. I forget what video it was, but、uh, I was introduced to the fact that multiplayer quests solo are impossible when I played through、uh, a little bit of Three Ultimate on the 3DS, and I was like, oh my god, this is real tough. Can you not go diagonal? Jesus, Shmungus. I think it was Gaijin Hunter in one of his videos said that he beat all of three U, including G rank, just solo because he wanted to. I was like, holy, that's some real proof of a hunter bull. But knowing what we know now, I'm gonna drop that move. Which, okay, I did 131. That's that's like mid. I'm kind of fine with you know fibbing that because we have an extra wire bug. Can you please sit still? Oh, we're in yellow mode as well. Let's go blue. Also, thank you to everyone who commented and confirmed my suspicions that blue is just blanket terms better than yellow for this entire game.、Uh, my only other question is: the alternative to blue is this, like you don't have a level three charge on the hammer move set thing. I, I honestly don't think that's good at all, but. I could be wrong about that. If someone in the comments wants to correct me and be like, "It's good in a very niche scenario," then cool. But I, I haven't seen anything compelling about it. All I know is that we have very powerful gear. I don't expect this thing to last long at all. Now I don't know if my plan is to do all of the hub quests solo. When we get to high rank, there might be a time when. Okay, these are getting a little little dicey, and it might be worth it to have、um, like SOS flares or something. I think, though, I, I mean, I don't know. It's it's in a weird spot where I don't think this game is too too difficult. But I mean, I guess this guy's gonna be a, a big hell for us because he's gonna either be incredibly easy or an absolute pain. Also, I need to look into my armor to make sure that it can't upgrade anymore because it might be able to. It's been a while since I've checked. Hey bud, are are you not happy getting hit with a gross hag hammer? Is that not something that you were looking forward to today? I'm sorry. You know what? I'm not looking forward to my brain giving me bad ideas first thing in the morning. For those of you who don't know,、uh, my computer setup has already four monitors on it:、uh, a big screen, a vertical, a drawing tablet, and a tiny touch screen.、Um, and they're all nice. They're all lovely. But obviously, my brain says more question mark. So this morning, I looked at the my graphics card and saw that I actually do have an open display port. And、uh, at my parents' house, I found a 1080p monitor that I'm like, you know what's cooler than one vertical monitor? What about two? I know it is a dumb idea. 
trust me. However, my brain is also on a different wavelength and it's like, dude, that would be fucking dope. You know what happened? When, when you had one monitor, you're like, I don't need two. And then you know what happened? You got two and you're like, I don't need three. And you know what happened after three? You know what happened after three. After three monitors, I mean, it, it is honestly a problem, but you know, it's my desk, I wanna do it my way. I wanna have a 4K TV that is pumping my main monitor and main windows and shit. And then I wanna have secondary stuff. Maybe I wanna have OBS on one vertical monitor. Maybe I wanna have a YouTube video on the tiny touchscreen monitor. Maybe I wanna have Obsidian on my drawing tablet. And maybe I wanna have on the other one. Who knows? Who knows? I'm a creative boy. I'm a creative man. I, I need inspiration. No, but in all honesty, it, it, this is just one of those things that my brain was like, you could totally do it. You could do it today. Go upstairs. I, I go into the room that the other monitors and I'm like, ah, I mean, what are the odds that there's an HDMI cord that also has a display port adapter here? Oh, it's already here. You know that quick Amazon purchase that I made very hastily this morning for an, a uh, display port to HDMI adapter? Uh-huh. That one? You can cancel it. It's already here, big boy. It's already here. It's in your hands. You have the ability to literally hook up a monitor today. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I hate my brain. Sometimes it's just like, this is a good idea. And I'm like, you know what? Right now, I can't justify it. But by the time it's over, I'll be able to justify it. You'll, you'll, my, my new monitor will just be like the Spotify monitor. If I'm being completely honest, what would I use the, the second vertical monitor for? Because the one vertical monitor is on the uh, right side of my TV screen. So the other one is going to go on the left side of it and it's gonna sit in between what is the TV screen and the drawing tablet. In all honesty, having files there is the smartest thing because when I do Photoshop stuff, I do it on the tablet. When I do Premiere stuff, oh, I do that on the TV. I use all 43 inches of this TV and it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, okay? Don't talk about the TV. I saw so many forum posts that were like, don't do it, man. Don't use a TV as a screen monitor. It's, it's not gonna, it's gonna be bad. Don't do it. And you know what happened? I did it and now I wear glasses. But hey, that's what, that, sometimes you need to make sacrifices, okay? You gotta get on that Andrew Tate Monster Hunter. Should I make my character a Monster Hunter Wilds bald and call him Tateman? That's a great question. So I was talking with my parents about it because I was like, you guys don't understand. Monster Hunter Wilds is great. And they're just like, uh, okay. They they were talking about Monster Hunter Wilds. And I was like, I think it comes out in spring, but I need to time it perfectly. After we wrap Sunbreak, I need to find a game that I can get into and then wrap up before Wilds comes out. And I'm like, I, I ooh, that's a little that's a little close for me. Uh oh, you bet. Seriously? You're gonna KO me with a hot link, you bastard. <gasps> You gotta throw it? Jesus! Kulu's a cool monster. I like that he's kind of one of the more basic monsters. I hope we see him again. I think he, he, he's got a lot of style, a lot of class. He eats eggs. That's cool. That's rad. Shout out Kulu. He's getting his protein in, eating eggs, getting Pyrathian for eating her eggs. I'm surprised I haven't gotten a KO yet. Come on. Let me drop the big rock. Now, I don't know. Maybe I'll post the photo or uh, it, it probably will not be done <clears throat> by the time this video gets edited. It'll probably be something I work around. Uh, on this weekend to get that monitor up. Uh, I already found the power supply for it. I already have the cables. It's not gonna be that difficult. The main thing is like, does it impact my computer and my graphics card that much? Which in the past, they really haven't. I've been able to push all my monitors well. Like it doesn't really struggle to render all of these. So I don't know, it'll be an interesting, an interesting little experiment. Maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. Um, I'm just more excited for the fact that the computer gets to look more ridiculous and more Mad Max-esque because I like salvaging computer parts to put on this mother and making it worse and worse for the normal person. Actually, I think my brother, who my brother is an actual like film and photography editor for like companies. He uh, came by after I moved in and he saw the desk and was like, oh, oh, holy. Like, you have an entire production studio on one desk. And I was like, yeah, dude. Like, I'm taking the YouTube shit, obviously. I have the drawing tablet so I can create horrible thumbnails, which I do need to get better at the thumbnail game. The clickbait, you know, some some episodes have been have been real raw clickbait. I'm happy to say that at least it, it works its way into the episode, you know? So it's like, oh, that phrase was said at some point in the episode due to the whole, you know, roll credits bit. 
which I need to mention that. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get into actual trouble with that one. Because the more I thought about it, I was like, is that trademarked by CinemaSins? It might be. Like, I, I would not be surprised if it was. Is this guy going to croak before I get the chance? Come on. Oh, he kept flinching. Can we keep up with him? Oh, he, he's finally putting the, the afterburners on. No, I thought about it. I was like, you know, the CinemaSins guys, they might have trademarked roll credits. If that's like on a TV or on a t-shirt or something, that could be technically speaking trademark. But I'm not using it in the context of a movie review, so I might be fine. Also, they might be cool with other YouTubers. I'm using it as like a, haha, I'm a fan of YouTube. I, I watched CinemaSins for a long time when I was a kid. I still remember the, uh, if you haven't seen it, watch CinemaSins for, um, it's not San Andreas, it's a disaster movie though. What the f is that movie called? He probably did one for The Day After Tomorrow, which is a great movie from my childhood. It's so stupid, but it's 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 fine. I like it. It's made by the same director though. What is it called? Oh, 2012. That's the one. Because the Mayan calendar ended there, but the Mayan calendar also didn't account for leap years, so it was gonna end, I think, like in like the 90s or something. But yeah, they made 2012, and uh, that movie is ridiculous, but I was dying laughing watching the uh, beautiful cinema sins, everything wrong with 2012. Raid film. Hey, can can you stop moving so I can collect your bits before this quest ends? Jesus Christ. All right, let's launch ourselves. Have some fun. Wee! Give me all this cool yaku. Should we talk about some more Monster Hunter Wild stuff? Uh, like I alluded to in the beginning of this episode, uh, there's some stuff that I got somewhat wrong uh, that I want to kind of clarify once again. If you're looking for good Monster Hunter Worlds like coverage, I'm not the place to get it. I'm just the guy who's sort of talking about it out of my head. So, yada you, yada yee. I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna go with it. Roll credits. Okay, there's paintballs and threat level system. Apparently, we might be getting what I mentioned in the last episode. Great Azuchi. Oh, he's right over here. In Monster Hunter Now, the Pokemon Go Mr. Beast collaboration uh, Monster Hunter game, there is a thing called threat levels, which are just kind of like more in-depth uh, levels of monsters instead of just being like, oh, he's a high rank or a low rank one. You now have monster threat levels. These are certain things like maybe a Raytheon never goes beneath a three, but it can go all the way up to like a tempered threat level monster. And so this can kind of be what I was talking about with the great Uichi or whatever the fuck this thing's name is. I want to see him as strong as some of the hardest monsters like a Rathalos. I want to see one that can beat the out of me or that's really fast because I really want a Monster Hunter game that has end game in which you can just fight whatever monster you want. Ideally, I want to fight Raytheon and a very tough Raytheon and I kind of get that with Gold Raytheon and Water and World, but you know, I want I want that type of stuff where you get better rewards for them. Overall, that makes sense to bring that system in from now. It's weird saying that out loud that the mainline games are getting a feature that was in Monster Hunter now. I, I did play a little bit with the Charge Blade. The Charge Blade's nice. Uh, it's just, once again, frustrating because the game is very monetized. The other correction that I wanted to make is the paintball. When I originally saw the paintball, I was like, oh, sick. Uh, Apparently, according to some tweets, and I probably won't be able to find this, I spent a lot of time in yesterday's video looking for tweets that I just never, or in some cases I found, I'm not gonna look for proof for this because, trust me, bro. Apparently the way the paintball works now is when you have a monster in quest that you come across, like let's say during this quest, we're hunting Great Uichi or Izuichi or whatever the it's called. But we see Lagombi on the map and we say, hey, Lagombi just showed up. I kind of want to hunt Lagombi. Well, you can paintball Lagombi and Lagombi will either A, stay around longer before leaving, or B, become one of your future quests that you can then go out on. So I think quests are going to be a little bit different in the fact that you might need to go actually gather information on them. 
or work to get quests instead of like what we have now where you just have infinite quests. More like a hybrid system that we saw in world with the investigations. How investigations have like a limited amount of them. Maybe that's the way it works now where it's like, you know, you might get tasked by the village to go kill a great Oichi, but first you need to go find Izichi. What the f is saying? I, whatever, you guys know I can't pronounce names of monsters. Don't expect that from me here. It seems like a pretty big change, but at the same point, I think Monster Hunter and the team behind them, they know what they're doing. I briefly, briefly touched on this in the last episode, but the Monster Hunter development team is really good at like asking themselves what they did right what they did wrong a great example because it was right around the time that i began to notice this if you look at and you compare and contrast the series of monster hunter with call of duty right call of duty in i want to say it's advanced warfare introduced a system that they basically put all their eggs into <clears throat> and they were basically like hey, this is the advanced movement system and you either like it or you deal with it. And that's just what they did up until, I want to say, Infinite Warfare. And it was after Infinite Warfare that they're like, we're going back to boots on the ground. And it was a big marketing push that they're like, hey, we got rid of that advanced movement system that everyone disliked. Monster Hunter doesn't operate like that. Uh, Monster Hunter, one, they don't work off of like a one year cycle. I think, technically speaking, it's like a two or three year cycle uh, between the uh, A team and B team games, or the mainline series and portable series games. The way that they operate is awesome. They will take a step back and go, was this a good option? Was this a bad option? You know, and I think that's always been a phenomenal feature for them. You look at the fifth generation. Okay, they introduced slingers. They introduced this new map design. Okay, they did a lot of shit with it. What happened when they went to, you know, 5.1 or when they went to Rise? They once again refined it a little bit more. They thought to themselves, is it cool to jump over huge amounts of the map and basically make the map infinitely smaller? In a lot of ways, no. It just didn't work out that way. Okay, well, that's interesting. So you watch as like Wilds is being released. The maps look more like Monster Hunter World which is awesome. They're not going to die on a bad idea. They're going to try an idea, they're going to make it work, and if they don't like it, they're going to change it. A great example, in the third generation, they introduced swimming mechanics. That's probably one of the most notorious ones because swimming was so divisive. To be honest with you, since I came in in Monster Hunter 3, I was just used to the swimming mechanics. I can totally see that if I tried it now, I'd probably hate it, but that's fine. Uh, you see in the third generation within it, the portable team releases portable third. It does not have swimming mechanics. Why? Because they had the freedom to just go, this is on a PSP, guys. There's no chance. Why would we try to add 3D controls to something that has one joystick? That's a bad idea. And they were right. They were really right. And what they realized is that, yeah, maybe the swimming thing was a different idea. So what did they do? They went back to the drawing board. Monster Hunter fourth generation starts coming out, starts getting, you know, it's, it's ready to go. And how do they tackle the 3D problem? They just add elevation, which is a f smart idea. They add the mounting system in game. Mounting is kind of broken, especially with certain weapons like the charge blade, or not the charge blade, the insect blade, where you're just a mounting king. So what do they do? They go back to the drawing board, they change things up again. You know, in this game, there is no mounting. It's uh, only the wyvern ride, which takes its place. You know what we see in Monster Hunter Wilds? Mounting is back. They're very experimental, and I, I like the fact that they're able to take things like you know, slingers or gillies, which were not a thing in uh, Monster Hunter uh, Rise. They're just not in this game. They're back now because they've taken the time to say, yeah, these are worthwhile additions to the series. Does it mean that they'll be in every single one? Maybe not. Maybe the portable team will do their own thing. Who knows? You know, portable sixth generation title could be like, we brought the wire bugs back. Like, we don't give a shit. We like the wire bugs. We like the bugs. We need the bugs. Give us the bugs. Yeah, they just have a very healthy development team, at least from the outside looking in. I don't know, it could be Abu Greg in there. It could be fucked up. It could be a horrible working condition. I, I really don't understand. I'm still in yellow, I'm not in blue. I'm sorry. I'm getting heated talking about Monster Hunter and advanced talk through the generations. But fuck it, it's my show. In that right baggie. I should really go blue, come on.
Blue Dan. Is he already? He's not. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this move because some people said it's really good and I continue to miss it. I don't get that move. I feel like I'm being gaslit. I honestly don't get that move. People say it's good. And I, I here, here's what, here's my mentality with it, right? I'll, I'll do it again just because I'm talking about it and I want to know what I'm doing wrong. Because genuinely, I feel like I'm being gaslit. I feel like this is a really shit move. I'm charging up, right? Level three, fully charged. I go up, I do the mega slam. 27, 27, 174, 134. But that took all of my wire bugs. It just took them. So I, I don't get it. How is that move more effective than just getting real smooth with the other one? I, I will accept that I could be doing something wrong. That's a possibility. It really is. Oh, God, on a slide, which I remember slides were like the shit for hammer users back in world. They were like, you can slide and hit the Sonic. But like that, that does 120. I mean, even the big hits with this is kind of like very similar. I don't know. I'll, st I'll stick around and do one more hunt. Monster Inner Wilds introduces a really cool thing that I'm kind of iffy about. Uh, the new healing system. Uh, in the radial menu clip that I used in yesterday's video, they talk about this new item you can put in your radial menu that's just called like most effective healing item or something like that. So in this case right now, since I have that much health left, I would most likely, if I hit this button, just get a normal potion, not a mega potion and waste its ability, right? And this makes some sense. Uh, I'm kind of curious because I would say in certain situations, I would rather have a mega potion, even though I'm not gonna use the full extent of its healing capabilities, just because of the fact that it heals faster. Pretty sure a potion and a mega potion take the exact same amount of time to consume. It's just one does more. So I, I, I don't know. That could lead to some weird stuff happening. Uh, I doubt it though. An urgent quest. Whoa. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're continuing the blitz. Oh, it's a tetrahedron. Look at him. I'm good with it. I can do a Legombi. Oh, I didn't eat. I forget that we named that f stupid owl. What do we name it? Like Prospector or something? Um... Yeah, just order, who cares? All right, let's get moving. Let's go fuck up a rabbit. Oh, boo-hoo, it's a rabbit. It'll reproduce and create another offspring in five milliseconds. Make your head spin. I, I saw something that was like, rabbit or female rabbits are just like, t like 24 seven in a state of heat. That's disgusting. Hey, the Gombi. I totally forgot you were in this game, but that's okay. Ouch. I, I don't know when it was, but it's been on my notes to talk about this for like the past week. Typically when I edit, I, I have like a pause and play button on like a foot switch so I can start and stop YouTube videos very frequently. Because a lot of the times in my editing process, I need to like listen to what the hell I'm saying. And some other times I don't. I typically watch YouTube videos that are either like stupid YouTube drama from the, the commentary community, or I'll watch uh, like weird long videos that I've already watched before and I'm just like kind of taking a cursory glance at them uh like the Five Nights at Freddy's Game Theory uh mega playlist that's a great one I've been through that uh, quite a few times anything from Rye Toast about the uh, Five Nights at Freddy's look look I know it's great shame but one of my favorites is Wendigoon and just you know going through his channel and shit. and so the other night I was like I'm gonna watch you know one of the old ones a, a goodie a classic Wendigoon the Wendigoon Mandela catalog uh, episode one uh, phenomenal phenomenal video the entire I think it's a three-part series about the Mandela catalog is great dude I had to stop it I, I forgot how up some of that is like uh specifically it's the point in i think it's like the child stress assessment video in which uh there's like the kid saying that there's someone at the bottom of his stairs and then he like draws the stairs in the dark room and then there's just this weird face and you're like oh okay and then like the video ends and then it goes to like the next part of, or it goes to the next part of the video it doesn't end they just start saying like okay now here's images and it's like normal images and then you just get this image of like a staircase with a dark door well in the bottom and you're like oh like it just comes out of nowhere and you're just sat there living in this moment of like a face is about to appear isn't it and then a face fucking appears you're like son of a but it's, it's such a good reveal. Hey, pass me. This is pretty f uncool to make me edit that late at night, okay? F you. F 
you, you piece of shit. I had to watch a YouTube video about how to do voiceovers in Premiere just so I could tell you to go fuck yourself past me. That child warned us. That child was not happy. That child was stressed out. There's something down here for me. Shout out Mandela Catalog. When the live action stuff gets in, it's a, it can be a little, a little wee bit cringy. You know, that's low budget for you. They're doing the best with what they got. So no shame on them there. But shout out Wendigoon. Fucking making some epic, <laughs> making some fucking epic videos. Now if Lagambi would die, he's just so dumpy and big and fat. No, he's in his spinny spins. It's okay, bud. I have this spinny spin too. This is a great hammer. Thanks for the suggestion. This thing's fucking great. Oh, and then I did notice something in the uh, before recording this episode when I did the uh, two monster quests. So apparently, even though I have it so my, uh, like I don't see the blue in the upper right, I can still see it on the map uh, when a monster is capturable, much like this Lagambi is now. Sorry, I looked. But the other thing is I don't pay attention to what the cat says in like the right hand side of the screen. He absolutely tells you like, oh yeah, our target monster is capturable now. Like we can grab him. Actually, that is a good point. What should we make the Monster Hunter Wilds character? Because now that armor is, you know, there is no gender to the armor. It's just like the A armor and B armor, which I have a fucking game theory about that. Uh, my game theory goes as follows. I think the team uh, didn't want to design a male and female counterpart. So they just did the A and the B and then they're just like, yep, that's it. Game theory. I like how a tall call or whatever that thing just showed up and was like, yep, cool, bye. <laughs> He's flying to area one. He's out of here, holy sh**. Lagambi, you've gotta be, I mean, okay, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great day. Enjoy your weekend, have a great one. Call your mother, tell her you love her. Bye.